emanating from the headquarters of Sinclair World Ministries in Baker, Louisiana, reaching out to every nation, spreading the gospel throughout the world, transforming lives with the love of Jesus Christ. How many of you know that prayer is important? You have not because you, you have not because, why don't you have? Well, I thought is I had to go do this, I had to go do that. You have not because, oh, because you ask not. So who's going to give it? Oh, wow. All right. So then here I got a couple of questions, and I got a little guy here that's got a mic, and I want to hear from you. What is prayer? Let, let's, let's just stop and think about this. What really is prayer? All right, come on, there's one right here. He, he's got his, uh, just put you, if you don't want to raise your hand, cut, just hold your finger up. <laughs> Wait, uh, don't give him the mic, you hold the mic yeah. always. Never hand the mic. <laughs> 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 you lose control when you give the mic up. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, to me, prayer is direct communication with God. Direct communication with God. Anything that I ask or want, I, I could go, as my grandmother said, down to Kneebone Station. What kind of station? Kneebone Station. Kneebone. What? Uh, that's your kneel down. Oh, the knee bone. Yeah, knee bone brother. Station. You, you, you got Kneel yeah, down yeah, calluses on your knees <laughs> from praying. Right. Yeah, praying the station. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. How, how many of you like that station? <laughs> how many of you need to visit the station more? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> 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 All right, so he says that prayer is direct communication with God. It, uh, survey said? Okay, who else has got another, all right, what, come on, another one, and I want to hear a couple. What is prayer is our, is, is our question today. Fellowshipping with Christ. Fellowshipping with Christ? Yes. Okay, all right, survey said? Amen. Okay, all right, good, good. Okay. To me, prayers is that prayer can go and change things that you can't change, and prayers will get there before you get there, even though you can't get there. Prayer can change things that you can't change. Good. So let me ask you something. Can you change anything? No, but, to, but through prayer and trusting and believing in God, it's already changed. So when I pray, who really changes things? God changes it for me. Oh. Through my faith, it gets done. That is very good, because you can't change anything. I can't do anything while God... So you praying... In yourself. All right. So, so when we pray, do we have to pray like God's plan? No, not really. You pray from your heart and from your spirit. You pray from there because we let ourselves go to God. And with our spiritual realm, we'll get there faster. But through self and anger and bitterness, you'll never get there. Right. Which is, you got to pray God's plan. All right. Pray yes. God's plan. I'm glad you said that because you do have to play God's plan because God's plan is the only one that will prevail. Exactly. His will. Yes. That's why Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, nevertheless. Not my will, but your will. Yes. So I, I'll add since I got a mic here. It says that I, it gives honor to God when in all of our decisions. You know, you honor him and, you know, not so much what color shirt to wear, but choices we make every day or weekly that gives him honor to consider him in our thoughts and our decisions. All right. So how many agree with all of that? Is that good? Is that yeah. good? Okay. All right. You got one down there? Hustle. You got to hustle. Dead air kills the spirit. It's a way to give God glory for everything. It's everything. a way. All right. So when I pray to God, I'm actually relying on God. I'm acknowledging God. I'm looking to God. I'm allowing God his place in my life. Survey said? Amen. Okay. 
All right, so I agree with that. We've got another one over, Miss Destiny. And watch her, because if you give her the mic, <laughs> I'm telling you, you watch, oh <laughs> she'll bring the whole house down. And we'll no. all be on, we'll be at the knee station. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I remember that Catherine Kuhlman said that God don't use golden or silver vessels, but God use yielded vessels. When we pray, we yield to God. And when we yield, then it's God that's praying through us. So when you are a yielded vessel, you cannot miss the will and the plan and the purposes of God. And it's an energy and a strength that comes on you when you know that you are praying out of yourself. And in spite of yourself is when God just stands up on the inside of you and he shakes the foundations. And it is a yes and an amen. The Lord thy God fulfill all thy petitions. Amen. amen. Survey said? Amen. Okay, all right, good, <laughs> good. All right, let's, so let's, let's go ahead and get into the little lesson that I put together. And um, so we're talking about right believing. How I many of you know that when I believe right, I, I act right and I live right? Okay, I agree with that. All right, so um, uh, we're talking about prayer then. And I want to I wanna talk about how to effectively pray right. How many of you want to pray right? All right, so, so that's what I've been thinking on. So what do we take home today from this service? What is our theme today? Our theme is prayer, but our theme is actually learning how to pray right so that we can be effective in our prayer. Now let me ask you something. Um, will practice make you better? Wait a minute, why? <laughs> you said it. Is that destiny? Is that you again? <laughs> Have you thought about preaching? All right, there, come here. <laughs> what did you say? Right practice. So you mean telling me you could practice the wrong way yeah. and not get better? Oh, okay, yes, that's right. I, I agree with that. That's what I was thinking. All right, so let's jump into it then. Jesus said, Luke chapter 22, verse 46, he says, Rise and pray. Why do you go to sleep? Pray lest you also enter into temptation. Now we're in the Garden of Gethsemane. Who knows that story? So what, what took place in the Garden of Gethsemane? Miss Ginger's over there. She raised her hand. Hustle, you got to run and when you're in church. We're, we're full gospel. You run. Yeah. I don't, in fact, I don't know what a half gospel is, but we're full. All right, so... Oh, excuse me. The Garden of Gethsemane is where Jesus was agonizing before the crucifixion when he was taking on the burdens of the world, the sin burden. So what was he getting ready to do? To, to offer himself up as a sacrifice for our sin. Was he under pressure? It, the whole weight of it was on him. The weight of the world? Yes. And what did he actually say when he prayed to God the Father in the Garden? He asked if it was possible that that cup would pass from him because it was a terrible thing. And the cup was? The sin. The sin debt. And what would he have to go through? He would have to go through crucifixion, the laying down of his life. So he would literally be crucified and die yes. for the sin of all the world. That's right. And so that weight and that pressure was on him. And he prayed. In fact, he asked his disciples to pray with him, right? Yes, that he needed the support. You ever ask anybody to stand with you? And then they go to sleep. <laughs> all right, yeah, so, all right. <laughs> and not once, but three times, okay? <laughs> and so that's why Jesus says, rise and pray. Wake up. Is that a word for us? What would that word mean to you, Nick? Wake up, rise, and pray. What does that mean? To you. How does that apply to Nick? Not to, the, not to those disciples, to you as a disciple. Start taking responsibility for the goals that God has set before me and be responsible with his teachings. Have you ever gone to sleep on the Lord? Yes, I have. No, Nick. <laughs> Stand up. No, uh, 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 all right, all right, all right. I want the whole world to see you. 
Confession. You have gone to sleep on the Lord. I have let God down many times. None of these guys have ever gone to sleep on the Lord. I'm not judging none of them. <laughs> Did he answer right? Survey says. Yeah. All right. Come on, give the Lord a great big hand clap. <laughs> Are we having fun? Yeah. All right. All right. Are we learning anything? Yeah. God help us. All right. So, so then that was our question. What is prayer? Why does God need us to pray? All right, listen. Is God omniscient? Is God omnipotent? Is God omnipresent? All right, so then if God has all knowledge, omniscient, he knows everything. There's nothing that God does not know. If God is omnipotent, he has all power in heaven and earth. He is God. He answers to nobody except to us. Now we'll talk about that. If God is omnipresent, meaning that God is here right now. That's one of the revelations about prayer. When I pray, God's here. Jehovah Shema, the Lord God is there. The Lord God, well, listen, God is everywhere at one time. Behold, if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I go down to the bottoms of the depths of the sea, miles into the sea, at the bottom of the furthest canyon in the seas, behold, thou art there. Jehovah Shema. The Lord God is there. The Lord God is here. So, all right, God knows everything. God has all the power, and God's everywhere at one time. Why in the world? Hands, brother, wake up. Hands. Why would he ask us to pray? He needs us to pray so he can teach us to walk through our trials and to strengthen us. Okay. Survey says? Yes. Okay. All right. That's one reason. Okay. Good. All right. You got right there, boss. I'll catch this one. Wait, which one? <laughs> that one. Thank you. Thank you. No, the confusion is not of the Lord. It's a way to submit yourself to him. So he wants us to submit ourselves to him? That's our show of faith to him. All right. Our show of faith to him. All right. Now. Does God get glory out of that? God gets glory for everything. We, we give him the glory, yeah. Yes, he deserves yeah, all right. glory. As a free mortal agent, for you everything. might choose to take the glory yourself, but what would happen if you glorified yourself? I don't know. That's not Pride goes thing. before. Get the fall, yes. Oh, you got it. Yes. All right. all right, all right. So God knows everything. God has all the power in the universe. God is everywhere at one time. God's on Mars right now. He's on planet Earth right now. God is everywhere at one time. God's down in hell. Imagine that. He ain't fellowshipping, but he's there. Why? Why do we have to pray? And I'm coming to both of y'all. Um, my thought is that God has assigned the church, and that's us, to do the praying here on earth to bring in the things that he has planned to happen. So you mean to tell me God has made himself dependent? This God of the universe that knows all and has all and is all has made himself dependent. He's handcuffed himself and tied his hands behind his back. Are y'all? It's his plan that we were assigned to pray because that's the way he decided to make things come to fruition on earth. So God established the law and now he's bound by his own word, his own law. And his law was this, is that he would give man dominion over the earth. 
so that nothing would happen in the earth unless it came through a man. I couldn't even save the world unless a man. Jesus became a man and walked in the dominion that the law of God gave man and saved the world. Because nothing happens in planet earth unless it comes through a man. How many of you feel like praying now? All right, yeah. Okay. Is what they both said. Everything is birthed through the birth canal of um, prayer. And not only does prayer change things, prayer change us. And the scripture reference comes to me, I think it's Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I heal the land and heal from heaven. So when we pray a lot of times, that's what gets the heart turning in that right position. A lot of times we have blind us, but when you begin to pray and you cultivate prayers, a lot of times I go to praying for God or someone and I end up being the one God touches or changes or heals or delivers. We point fingers, not intentionally, but when we pray, I'm a tattletale, I tell on all of you, but when I do that, God always point the finger back to me. You're always responsible in some way or some form or some fashion. We are responsible for our nation. We must pray and change our wicked ways. Amen. Amen. Awesome. All right. All right. So, um, is it important for us to pray? Miss Thomas, see her back there. Let's take one more and then we'll jump into this lesson. All right. Are, are we thinking? Wait, wait. Guys, are we thinking in this place? All right. Are we figuring out how important it is for us to pray? And then I want to teach us real quick how to pray. All right, because I think we pray a mist. Um, so, all right, Miss Thomasia, right there. I believe in my heart that God wants us to pray because that's a type of communication with him. And in order for us to communicate with him, we have to pray. And by us praying to him, he said put him in remembrance of his words. And when we put him in remembrance of his words, by reading his word, we will know his promises. So therefore, if we know his promises, we can pray his promises back to him. And he will stand by his word to perform it. Amen. That's good. And, that, and that's where we're headed. That's the vein that we're headed in, is praying God's will. So through, through his word. Because you have no power in yourself your will as far as you making something happen by your will has no power the power is only in God's will therefore when we pray we must pray God's will because God is already foreordained because he's God and we're not can I get an amen all right, so let's take a look at that then. Let's, um, let's get going. Let's jump in, jump in this. We talked about what is effective prayer. We talked about that. Let's keep moving. Um, so when does God really answer prayer? We'll be talking about that today. Keep moving. Um, does real prayer come out of a relationship with God in accordance with His will? Yes. So yes, we all say yes. Survey says yes. Why would the church then lack power and be weak? What would be one of the reasons why? Lack of praying God's will? Okay, survey says yes. Okay, all right. Uh, these questions then also and more will be answered in this series. So we're going to do a series on prayer. How many of you want to learn how to pray? All right, so let's spend some weeks then in time to come on prayer. And I think that our lives will ch be changed forever. I think that we're going to learn some things concerning prayer. And of course, I've, I've got many sermons I've preached on prayer already, but all this is new stuff. So um, we'll be able to add this to our prayer portfolio. So then prayer is really the mystery of God. It's the mystery thought today. Because you say, if God has all power, God knows everything, God's everywhere at one time, why in the world would He be dependent upon me to pray before He moves? 
Why would God have to wait on me to go to work? How many believe that's a mystery? That's like a sobering, that's like a, oh my God, Lord. You're God. I, I, I'm me. All right, so let's keep moving. We understand then that God has all knowledge. God is, uh, has all power and he's everywhere at one time. I've already talked about that. Let's keep moving. So God actually then waits for us to pray and then he, he takes action. God doesn't do anything by himself uh, alone. Now, I know somebody say, man, if you don't know the word of God, you'll say, man, that's heresy. You've lost your mind. How could you think that you, you would have anything to do with God's moving in planet Earth? But I'm telling you, when God established dominion to human beings on planet Earth, God's established a law that he has to live by. Are y'all out there? So Philippians 4, 6 says this, Be careful for nothing or be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through what? Prayer, Prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known unto God, and then God's going to give you something. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. So, so here's what God says. Stop being anxious. Be careful for nothing. But in everything. What's everything mean? And what does that mean? So the definition is everything. And y'all just told me everything means everything. You didn't tell me nothing. Somebody hollered, oh, what is it, Miss Linda? Not leaving anything out. So everybody said? Amen. All right. So how often do I need to pray? Oh. And when do I need to have some anxiety? Yeah. Why? Because I'm what? Because I'm praying. And what happens when I pray? Does anything come in my heart? No. Peace. <laughs> Be anxious for? Nothing. Does anxiety help us? No. It makes it worse. It makes it worse. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> so when should I fret? When should I be freaking out? When do I... Uh, uh. When will the peace of God come into my heart? When I pray. Why? Because when I pray to God, does he got it? Wait a minute. Does God got it till I pray to him? Do I need to pray before he got it? All right. You, I, I got a mixed kind. I don't want to holler so everybody now, teacher. So... <laughs> All right, somebody said, oh, yeah, he's got it before you prayed. He may got it before he prayed, but he ain't doing nothing before I pray. That's... So God says, and I got Miss Alicia. All right, all right, Miss Alicia. Come on in. I got to keep, I got to get moving. Um, God wants to hear from us, and so that's why we pray. And he already knows what we need before we ask him. But the reason that he wants us to pray is because he wants to hear hear from us and God is willing to bless us he wants to bless us he wants to give us things but the number one thing that he wants is our intimacy and love with him that's why he wants us to communicate and pray survey said Amen. I'm in agreement I, I think that's wonderful <clears throat> oh God wants what coach glory ah God wants the glory all right so let's get into this and I got to get going and I got to pray for y'all and let y'all go home and Survey said? Amen. All right. All right. 
So the scripture says then in Matthew chapter 7, 7 through 8, Ask and it shall... When will it be given? Before I ask? Alright, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to establish that nothing happens on earth till we pray God's will to Him. Here's the steps of prayer. God reveals His will to us. We pray His will back to Him, and then God manifests us. That's the way it works. Say it one more time for this side. God reveals His will to us. Then we pray God's foreordained already will back to Him, and then God manifests or goes to work and makes it happen. Can I give you my definition of prayer? Prayer is a cooperation with God's will. Because prayer ain't going to change nothing till I pray what God's will is because nothing else matters. You got it? Your prayers will never be answered till you cooperate with His foreordained will that He ordained, He predestinated, He foreordained it before the foundation of the world. It was God's will. If you don't pray God's will, nothing will ever happen. This is what I've been thinking about all week. And I couldn't wait to come tell you what I was thinking about. <laughs> I love to think about the Lord and His will and His purpose and His plan and His operations. All right, so let's take a look at it. I, we could probably just go home after that. All right, all right here's script. Ask... And it shall be seek, knock. Let me ask you something. And I, uh, uh, Carrie, y'all got to stay with me. I don't even know where I'm going. Let's see. Let's go to this door right here. The Bible says to knock, and what will happen? The Bible says to. Seek and you shall find, ask and it shall be given, knock and it will. When will the door open? When will God open the door?